And another uh, example, uh, another Hickerson masterpiece here. Uh, here is uh, less than 3,000. This contains three stifle breeders. Uh, I'll just let the thing run here. I guess we need to do control T or just T. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and what is going on here? Well, this is actually computing the prime number. So if we go over here and look, there's a 2 and a 3 and a 4, and there's a 5 and a 6 and a 7, and it goes all the way to 9, and so on, et cetera, et cetera. So how does this work? Of course, uh, is it's uh, uh, it's making a sieve of Eratosthenes <laughs> here, and uh, we'll just let the thing run uh, uh, for a while. And of course, this program has the ability to go very, very fast. We just keep telling it to go faster and faster, and it's to run up to 32,000 per step. And it's, yeah, it's a little labeling right there. But now you can see, uh, we thought, you know, wow, I mean, this program will compress anything. Maybe this is actually a good way to compute primes. I mean, we've already generated a million, uh, it generates primes at 120, and so uh, what do we do? We've got 10,000 primes already. Well, that's actually not so great. And what happens is this region here becomes so chaotic that uh, the program can no longer exploit the regularity. So it's not a fantastically good way to compute. Primes, but it's pretty neat uh, that, that it's better to make a very special purpose device like this than to try to build a uh, computer out of life program. And, and people have done computer out of life, it's very, very large. Project. So uh, we now go on. Um, returning to the theme of uh, nonlinear growth or superlinear growth, it got to be a kind of a contest, uh, which is uh, uh, who can get the smallest initial population. I think this one said 71. Let me So uh, now the population's gone up again. So what this winds up doing is called a mosquito, and it winds up growing uh, into a, uh, a puffer, which is creating these quarterman switch engines. And, uh, and of course, the population's going quadratically. Uh, let me just check one more time. OK, population 71. Um, and so this was done by a guy named Nick Gotts. And then he, he topped himself uh, with this extremely strange pattern, um, which I don't have time, I think, to give extreme details on, but just to watch it go. Uh, and uh, this one gets really weird. Uh, it involves spaceships and, and spontaneously created uh, switch engines. And it's so fractal that it's actually a real piece of math uh, to show that the population does grow uh, asymptotically, quadratically, or in fact, you know, grow indefinitely without blowing up at all. So uh, it, it gets weirder and weirder over time. Um, so then uh, I got into the act. I, I named it after God's. But I got it down to 41 uh, with just these two puffer trains. Uh, over on the left here is a quarterman diagonal switcher. Uh, here is a ship type uh, a period 12 in kind of thing. And we'll let this thing run. And, uh, and it's just growing linearly. And uh, you know, what is this claim? Well, we noticed that at around 200,000 generation, we're up to 3 million already, uh, we grew this sprout. So if we would just keep doing that, we'd have nonlinear growth. Uh, but we're now up to 200 million, and it isn't doing that. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's a little disappointing. Now we're up to a billion. Um, so now I guess the, uh, the gliders on the screen are uh, about the size of the bacteria on the screen. Uh, and uh, so what's happening here? Let me uh, talk to you one faster. Uh, I'm impatient here. Uh, let's see, what is our step size now? We're stepping, up, uh, we're stepping now at 2 billion. Okay. Believe it or not, each of those steps is two billion, uh, and now we're up to eight billion. Is it? Uh, yeah, step two to thirty-four. That's sixteen billion. Uh, so uh, I guess this thing is not what I claimed it was. Uh, oh, oh wait a oh, moment. There is another trap. Okay, that happened at four trillion. And um, so, <coughs> what's going on here? Uh, and what's going to happen next? Okay, first of all, this little smudge. Okay, it contains uh, about 32 million gliders, and uh, uh, and they're about the size of the atoms in that screen. And you, you would, it would just be a dot, except for that they're really spread out. Um, so what this thing is doing is it's growing uh, at basically t log t, but the base of the logarithm is 20 million, which means that the next sprout is going to be at 80 quintillion. Uh, so uh, boy, is that ever! Growth. Uh, so, oh my God, you just get the routes. Yeah, that would be a good one. And uh, and so, of course, that was ridiculous. Uh, and in fact, I was only able to get to a double minus one. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> so if we uh, go ahead and zoom in on this thing, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, I guess I miscounted. But anyway, uh, uh, there, there are the actual life dots. And uh, for example, uh, uh, this uh, blinker right here, say these two blinkers right here, uh, are horizontal. So I'll bang on the space bar, and uh, there they are vertical, and there's your Google. Uh, and of course, <laughs> if I were to, uh, to you know, back off this thing to our original scale at a convenient 20 million per second zoom rate here, uh, then, uh, uh, okay, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, just a little bit of another shot there. Uh, now, at this scale, a step of 10 to the 95th would not be perceptible. And yet, we just you know, observe a step size of 1. And uh, we have a population here of 3 Google. Uh, that's about 10 to the 20th times the number of subatomic particles in the universe. Uh, there are about 10 to the 59 chess positions. <laughs> so we're 10 to the 20 odds smaller than the number of double bug house positions, if anybody's familiar with that uh, sort of thing. Um, so, here I was, the, again, the champion uh, of, uh, of nonlinear growth, and out of nowhere, this 12-year-old Australian kid uh, named Mitchell Riley comes up with this. And, uh, you know, just in a matter of you know, a couple of days, I think, okay, and this had uh, 40 dots compared to my 41. And uh, if I reset this thing, this pattern, this was no fluke. This pattern is actually subtle. I, would, I don't think I'd have found it because uh, I never put this guy here because I thought moving him in one period uh, would be equivalent, and it isn't. Uh, so I don't know how he found this, um, but uh, the guy is for real. Uh, he taught himself life entirely uh, by just picking up a copy of Winning Ways, which is a very non-trivial book. Uh, he has no, no life hackers in the family or friends or school. Uh, and if you want proof that the guy is you know, dangerous, he's already been hired by Google Sydney. And <clears throat> I don't know what it means for a 13-year-old to sign an NDA, but I do know that they seem to grow up faster over there uh, because I asked him, uh, at what age do Australian boys develop that peculiar ability to uncap beer bottles with two spoons? And he answered, why use spoons when you have an eye socket? Uh, so uh, I sent him back, uh, well, okay, so when do you start dwarf tossing in PE? And at that point, uh, uh, Nick Dodds ended our party because he isolated the mechanism uh, of my uh, T-Log T sprout generator with a population of 26. And uh, we just let this run a moment. Uh, it actually starts uh, generating sprouts on a better, you know, linear basis, and so it has quadratic growth. 26 is a lot smaller than the original glider gun, and I wouldn't be surprised if this record is just never bested. I mean, 26 dots to grow quadratically is just weird. Uh, now, other things that, uh, if you haven't seen this, this is a real shock. Uh, let me just see if I just run this through with this speed here. I don't know if I uh, hyperspeed it, but uh, it, there it is, just filling space uh, at the maximum rate with the maximum stable density. I mean, what else could you do? Uh, I just kind of wonder if somebody had showed this to Conway early on. He might have just discarded the life form and said, oh, you know, if it could do that, who, who, who needs it? Uh, so uh, <laughs> then if I go here and, uh, and put a little obstacle in the way here uh, and then let her go again, uh, then she just blows herself off to pieces. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I just, the reason I'm running this is because I just wanted to show you that basically everything you know, all, as, as you probably well know, uh, every kind of localized experiment just produces this quinclux, you know, in, in, when viewed from a distance. There's all the static part in the middle, there's the <coughs> four semi-cardinal points. And in this case, we have two extra <coughs> on the corners here, uh, corresponding to the spaceships that were part of the initial pattern. But there's a very rare, you need, you need a really large initial pattern to get spaceships, but you get whatever, if there's such a thing as a known uh, you get the three by three diagonal. Uh, in the most general case, but but usually this very very characteristic uh, fire spot uh, is is the, you know, the large scale view of any you know, typical uh, you know, J random life experiment. 